If any New Testament passage gives us a clear view of the afterlife, it is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. How can soul sleep advocates dispose of this one? Although this story lacks specifics enough to develop a full-fledged picture of the afterlife, it poses serious problems for advocates of soul sleep. The rich man is conscious in Hades, Abraham is conscious in Paradise, and Lazarus presumably is conscious if he is being asked to run an errand. The scramble soul sleep advocates get into can be rather amusing at this point. It may be said that the whole story is meant to be figurative, not literal. We are told that Jesus capitalized on popular understandings of the conditions of the dead in Hades, not to endorse such views, but to drive home the importance of heeding in the present life the teachings of Moses and the prophets, because this determines bliss or misery in the world to come. But this raises an obvious question. Why didn't Jesus place the parable in the setting of the world to come instead of in the time of his contemporaries? As it stands, heeding Moses and the prophets had a shelf life of no more than 40 years after which the destruction of the Jerusalem temple made the question moot. It is also argued that in the preceding parable of the dishonest steward, Jesus uses a story that does not accurately represent biblical truth, as nowhere does the Bible endorse the practice of a dishonest administrator. But the parallel holds no water. The issue is not biblical truth, but reality. Dishonest stewards obviously existed, even if they were poor moral examples. Nothing Jesus told in that parable reflected a non-reality. I have one last verse I want to look at, and it is an end around that I have seen no soul sleep advocate deal with. Because it doesn't mention death, they would probably never think to mention it. We'll close with that next time.